We know the NBA is on the verge of returning. We're about a little more than a month away from the restart of the NBA season. But there are some players who are not excited about a restart, specifically uh, the vice president of the Players Association, Kyrie Irving, who is leading a group of guys they want to call this past Friday. Um, and I'll paraphrase what he said. Um, they are actually actually considering skipping out on the restart of the season. Now, all the other players haven't been named yet. Kyrie is obviously the biggest name because he is the VP of the Players Association. But he said this isn't the right time to come back. Uh, he feels that the message can, needs to be continued, uh, driven home, and players coming back would just be a distraction for everyone uh, wow. right now. Uh, Austin Rivers um, was kind of on the opposite side of the argument. He didn't say we shouldn't play, but he said, hey, look, we understand it's a business, and this is the way we make money. So if we are going to come back, we should find a way to donate our salaries towards the Black Lives Matter movement and continue mm -hmm. to, to push the message, but at the same time, Let's be that escape for everyone who's been locked in their home for the past four months. Um, we know LeBron is, is eager to come back and play. And Patrick Beverly came out today and said, look, if LeBron is ready to play, I'm ready to play too. At the end of the day, this is a business, but we don't want to distract from the message that needs to be portrayed. So with that being said, guys, where do we stand? Should the players come back or should we continue to drive home the message? Well, let me, let me, let me say these uh, two things really quick. One, Kyrie wasn't gonna be back anyway. We wasn't Kyrie still technically he's still out hurt, so he wasn't gonna be playing no way. And I do I gotta commend uh the NBA though. You know what I'm saying? Like we're not we're not talking about the NFL. If this was the NFL, then I would probably feel like Kyrie feels, but the NBA has been very vocal. Mm -hmm. They have been putting in work for, for a while now. So, you know what I'm saying? I, I commend and we all we all have commended uh Commissioner Adam Silva all the time for the work that he does they support the players you know when 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 they when they had the the hoodies on in Miami when they had the I can't breathe t-shirts on right. the NBA was has been very supportive so you know what I'm saying so I'm I'm okay with them coming back and I'm pretty sure that they're going to have something that they're going to do when the games start coming back too just because that's how the NBA has always like I said they've always been very vocal one and then and then two just from, from the player standpoint yeah you know at the end of the day you know although uh, someone like Kyrie who has a hundred million dollar deal mm -hmm. can afford to say yeah yep. let's just not play the rest of these games them them guys once you start getting to the to the to the sixth seventh and down the thirteenth man on the roster everybody not in a position to to not you know what I'm saying get them have them checks coming in so yeah. I can also understand it you know from that point as well. Just to add to the support that Kyrie Irving um, has been receiving, um, former NBA player uh, Stephen Jackson, who was a great friend of George Floyd, we've seen him on the front lines, we've seen him really pressing the issue um, about Black Lives Matter. He basically said, this, this isn't the time. Um, and he's, he completely agrees. Um, and I agree as well. I think this is the first time in history that the whole world's attention um, is on Black black lives and we have such a short attention span right things happen in the media we shift to the next thing and Brianna Taylor's officers that that shot and killed her home have not been arrested so to me we still need a protest we still need to cause an uproar um they're not arrested you have laws changing her name meanwhile her killers are out on the loose I was and just about so to say it I think it's imperative I think that we even did boycotting okay this is a marathon 381 days in civil rights movement did, did black people boycott the buses. That's how long it took. So I don't think a few weeks of protesting is enough. I think that if we have real black leadership and real black unity in the NBA, it will, it will really show like, yo, there's a real problem. Because if dudes that are making millions and are black and they feel away, people are gonna listen. And Kyrie is the perfect person for the message because he's one that is liked, no scandals, no issues, um, great player, you know, he, he's, a, he's, a, he's a premier player. So he is um, a great person to push this. You, as you guys know, if you're uh, six men off the bench and you maybe aren't a franchise player, it's kind of hard for you to talk your shit about, about you know, certain things. So I, I will say, and I agree with you on a lot of things, except one thing. I don't think Kyrie was the right person for this, even though the message is correct. Here's mm -hmm. why. As the vice president of the Players Association and as someone who is in the top 1% as far as salary and endorsements, it is very easy for him to say, I'm not playing. 
because he doesn't need that next check. And, and quite frankly, he probably doesn't need another check the rest of this year. Yeah. But when you represent the Players Association, remember, you're also representing those lower end guys who don't have guaranteed salaries, who really are living check to check. So when you put that kind of pressure on a guy who's the seventh, eighth, ninth man on the bench, mm -hmm. and you basically say, hey, we're not coming back to play, that guy's got some tough decisions to make now because he's got to look his family in the eye and be like, I know we need it, but I got to follow Kyrie's lead here. So I think Kyrie could have been a little, a little quieter in, in this stance. Not again, not the message itself, but saying we shouldn't return and I'm, I'm, I'm leading this coalition of guys who don't want to come back. Yeah. Has, um, has, has he been, has he been, because uh, I mean, outside of this, like, I don't know. Has he, he hasn't been, been very vocal, but, but yeah, in, in his defense, he, he was just elected the VP of the Players Association this season. So no, no, I'm not even saying that. I'm talking about in regards to like you know we spoke last um last week about Tobias Harris, Malcolm mm -hmm. Brogdon, uh, all of these guys that have actually been on the front line. But I I haven't seen anything with Kyrie Irving correct being outspoken or being or protesting or anything like that. Correct. I, I'm not I have say not he either. Hasn't, right. So I I just think in in that regards when you are the face of the Players Association, remember, you're, you're the second face, I say, because Chris Paul is the president of the Players Association, Kyrie's the VP. When you are in charge of 400 plus guys, you have to take into consideration every guy's needs and wants. Um, but I will say, and we've all been in agreement in this, the NBA has always been frontline of standing with their players and defending their player stance and saying, look, these men need, need their platform to, to use it the right way and to speak on these issues. And I think there will be some sort of agreement between the Players Association and the NBA where it's like, look, let's get back to business because we know if we don't continue this season, it's going to affect our future earnings as well. People got to remember, if the NBA doesn't come back, it affects salary cap next year. It affects advertisement dollars next year. It affects future contracts for guys. So, again, if you're one of those middle-of-the-pack guys, you want the NBA to come back so it doesn't hurt your future money. Yeah. But on the yeah. flip side, hold the NBA accountable and say, hey, look, we need to put together some sort of fund that we can donate to for the Black Lives Matter movement. We need to put our own, the same it's way the NFL, the NFL just put out their um, very, very thought-provoking commercial with Patrick Mahomes, with Michael Thomas. The NBA could do the same thing. The NBA has the bigger names and the bigger faces and say, look, let's be a part of the movement while we're still playing. We don't want to distract from that. So every sure. commercial break, we're going to run our commercial where LeBron is letting you know the importance of Black Lives Matter. Every it's game... Every game will highlight that we are donating to these organizations and we encourage you to do the same. Mm -hmm. So it can be done. And like I said, Kyrie's message is, is right, but he's also got to understand that as a VP, you kind of got to tread lightly so that other guys aren't screwed on the back end of this. Yeah, because out of that 400, is probably maybe 50 that could really right. be like, all right, all right, we can skip these games. The other cats, they're going to need them checks. Yeah, that's that's true because there are there are people who are just entering to that this is their dream and they're making they're making their money. I just think there has to be, you know, I think I disagree with the fact that this is the first time the whole world's attention is on this issue because of the lack of distractions. So maybe if there's a way to come back but still con continue the conversation and make it in your face and you know I and I again we've, we've spoken so often about Adam Silver and and the NBA always doing a great job in supporting their players. I mean, even when they played and Eric Garner, his death occurred, there was no problem and no hesitation with them wearing their I Can Breathe shirts. As you know, Roger good old, you know, Goodell would have had an issue with that. Um, but the NBA, you know, never really cared about the players speaking up. Um, and they supported, they supported that. Yo, this is Teresa Weatherspoon, better known as Teaspoon, and you're watching Real Fans, Real Talk. Real talk, we as real as you thought.